skin aging. So skin mm -hmm. is the most visible area and we can see that you're getting old and less elastic. But so how would you think about skin aging? And do you have any kind of topical recommendations? Oh, gosh, <laughs> I love the skin. So the skin is so cool because it gets attacked and yet you can fix it via two mechanisms. Right. So if you talk about it and I'm sure, you know, I don't want to bore your 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 audience, uh, but the anatomy of skin is such that the epidermis, of course, sits on the top and it has no vasculature. It has no nerve endings. It's pile of cells. It's like a brick wall that just the bricks get smaller and smaller and smaller and then they flake off. Um, below that, of course, is the dermis, and that's filled with fibroblast cells, right, which create your collagen and your elastin and hyaluronic acid. And it has your vasculature in it and has your nerve endings and your lymphatics, right? Mm -hmm. In between those, there is a wall it's called the GE junction. Um, actually, anyway, it, it, it vacillates, right? Mm -hmm. So the more it vacillates, the more surface area you have from the blood from below, the nutrients getting into your epidermis. As you get older, that gets flatter and flatter and flatter. So the ability to get nutrients from your internal to your external decreases over time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So your skin takes a hit from the inside, right? All the toxins and free radicals and all that stuff. And it also takes a hit from the outside, uh, same sort of things, skunt, sun damage, dryness, and all of that. But you can also then treat it by two ways. So you can take stuff systemically and topically. So depending on how old you are and how vacillating your junction is, will sort of dictate like what you need to do, right? So if you are younger and you have a huge surface area to get stuff from your epidermis or from your dermis to your epidermis, you need less topicals. As you get older, you need more topicals such that you can get both areas um, to be working. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, and then in terms of like, what do you what do you take? So, number one, your skin is just like every other tissue. You need to optimize all of the things that cause aging everywhere, right? Your skin's no different, except that it gets more sunlight, so it's going to have more free radical damage, more DNA damage, and that sort of thing. Um, in terms of what your skin does, you need to make collagen, you need to make elastin, you need to make hyaluronic acid. This is what makes your skin look healthy, right? Mm -hmm. And and I love it. People always say, drink more water, you'll look healthier. It's kind of bullshit. So water only stays in your body if it has something to stick to. And water sticks to hyaluronic acid. Um, the ratio is like one molecule of hyaluronic acid to 6,000 molecules of, of water right? It's pretty impressive. It's like a little molecular sponge. And as you get older, you lose the production of hyaluronic acid. So you can drink as much as you want. You're just going to pee it out because you're not, it's not sticking to anything. But interestingly, if you take oral hyaluronic acid, or if you can get hyaluronic acid to absorb through your skin into your fibroblasts, it actually activates your fibroblasts to make more endogenous hyaluronic acid. And the more you make of that, the more you hang on to liquids, the more you know plump and healthy your skin looks. So hyaluronic acid is in book two, and it doesn't do a ton, but it it's just so important as you get older to keep that tissue healthy. Um, and it's not just your skin. Any tissue in your body that has a significant water content needs hyaluronic acid. So your eyes need it. Your joints need it. Uh, your CSF needs it. Anywhere where there's fluid, it's very helpful. Um, so that's hyaluronic acid. The other thing that's really helpful for your skin is collagen. Collagen does the same thing. It goes to your fibroblasts and it directs your fibroblasts to make more endogenous collagen. Mm -hmm. So that's quite helpful. So that's sort of on the inside. The other thing, so from the outside, you can also, you can block UV radiation. Um, you can put on a whole lot of topical stuff. Like I make this goop, it's called swamp juice and everyone makes fun of it for me, for me. but you spray it on. Topical aloe is amazing. Uh, topical um, so white tea extract actually has, uh, it inhibits all the MMPs that actually dissolve your skin. Um Astaxanthin is fantastic because it blocks DNA damage, which, which comes from the sun. So there's a whole lot of really interesting aspects to protection of your skin, but you have to sort of be consistent and you have to sort of know where you are in the threshold to know if you should focus on more systemics or more topicals or both. 
Stress is an underlying cause of many health issues. And while most people focus on finding relief from stress through meditation or other forms of mental exercise, the stress may be caused by lack of a key nutrient. Magnesium is one of the most important nutrients for our health because it plays many crucial roles, supporting muscle and nerve function. It also impacts the release of stress hormones like cortisol and blocks the activity of stimulating neurotransmitters, leading to a more peaceful and restful state. To ensure that we have sufficient magnesium, my wife and I are taking Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Magnesium Breakthrough has the full spectrum of seven types of magnesium, specifically formulated to reach every tissue in our body for maximum health benefits. One of the important reasons we chose Magnesium Breakthrough is it's made with all natural ingredients, soy-free, gluten-free, lactose-free, non-GMO, free of chemicals and fillers. To get 10% discount on Magnesium Breakthrough, simply go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern. Use the code MODERN10. Thank you for your support. You said MMPs in there. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just trying. You're uh, like, was, that's a lot of stuff. I'm so sorry. Stuff. I get very excited. I'm like, oh, no, 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 that's good. Yeah, but there was a couple of questions that I would. So you said MMPs in there. Could you talk about MMPs briefly? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it's So when tissues get damaged... And in all tissues get damaged. The body has a way of cleaning out the bad stuff to make space for the good stuff. And there's a series of MMPs and they're just, they're enzymes that dissolve tissue. And they're, they're all numbered. I want to say there's 24 or 25 of them and they dissolve particular tissues. So there's some that dissolve, dissolve particular collagens. There's some that dissolve particular hyaluronic acid. There's some that dissolve elastins. And they're sort of, I don't want to say design because it sounds like whatever intervention, but they're mm -hmm. in your body to clean out bad tissues. So mm -hmm. if you have an inflammatory reaction or an infection, they come in, they clean out the crap, and then you can rebuild. The problem is that as we become more systemically inflamed, we activate these MMPs and we dissolve our own tissues that we don't want to dissolve, right? So mm -hmm. by blocking these, we actually have healthier tissue. Right. So there's a whole lot of things that block MMPs. And I've got this huge chart that shows what blocks which MMPs to preserve your skin and other tissues as much as possible. Okay, excellent. So the other thing is, uh, you're a rock climber, which uh, probably involves being outside and maybe at high altitude. Uh, yep. So what what do you do? I mean, you talked about uh, what is it, swamp juice? But is there anything else that you <laughs> do, you do for your skin? Oh gosh, I do so much goofy stuff for my skin. Um, well, when I am outside, so astaxanthin is one of my absolute favorite agents. Um, and the reason I take it, it's one of the strongest free radical scavengers with no side effects whatsoever. And it's demonstrated to protect your skin from basically DNA damage from UV radiation. Mm -hmm. So I take a lot of that when I'm outside and I'm climbing and I can tell when I don't take it, you forget you get burned. And if you, I'm, I'm pretty damn pale, as you can probably tell, uh, when I do take it, I do not get a sunburn at all. It's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. So astaxanthin is crucial to, to sun protection. Um, and I also slather on, you know, sun sunblock, but I think a lot of it's unhealthy. So I don't mm. tend to do that. I tend to rely more on my internal ingestion of, of sunblock stuff. And there's a variety of free radical scavengers you can take. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, there's something called Gotu Cola, which is um, centella that is amazing for the skin. That's both topical and oral. That's in my swamp juice. That is amazing for skin protection. Uh, and aloe is amazing for skin protection, um, both oral and topical. So of course I do both. That stuff is amazing. In fact, Alexander the Great knew how amazing aloe was. They particularly went to some island, um, conquered the island, took all the aloe, put it in um, in pots, and then took it on the battlefield. So when their warriors were wounded, they could treat it with aloe. Uh, so historically, we know that it's just fantastic for skin and topical wounds. It's just, it's incredible. Um, so, but the other fun things you can do, because I rock climb and I mountain climb at high altitudes, you can actually play with the subunits of your mitochondria so that you can use oxygen differently. And, and this is just so much fun to play with. You can actually change out something called, um, it's, this, it's, this, it's the subunit of your cytochrome C, and it can make you more Sherpa-like uh, in terms of how you utilize oxygen. 
Um, solid or side does it. There's a few things that do it. So it's really interesting. So when you're, when you're at high altitudes, your sats are lower, but your energy is higher. Um, because generally speaking, a normal person, right? Your mitochondria are going to like keep a certain saturation. Um, you'll have less energy, right? You feel like crap up there, but your saturations are generally fine. You can flip it. So your saturations are lower, but you're actually using that energy in your mitochondria to make more energy. And, and you can do that to yourself. It's kind of fun. Interesting. Yes.